Alright, go ahead and come on, Lindsay. This day is the beginning of a new family. There's going to be ups and downs. And as you two both are still human in your flesh. And that flesh is constantly battling the spirit. But as long as you consistently die to yourself and the Lord is number one in your lives, when those times come, you can lean on him and in unity with one another. You'll be able to go through those valleys knowing that God is sovereign and that all things are sifted through the Lord's hands. Lee Herbal, covenant before God and these witnesses to you, Lindsay Doran Hicks, to be your loyal and faithful husband, to love you and hold you, to nourish you and cherish you, to lead you, protect you, and comfort you in the fear of the Lord. I promise to daily wash you with the water of the word and to love you as Christ loved the church, laying down my life for you. I will seek to love you as my own body, even as Christ loves and cares for the church. You alone will be my delight as my wife. I will live with you in an understanding way, honoring you as the weaker vessel, since you are an heir with me in the grace of life. I will rejoice in the blessing of each child the Lord gives to us, for children are a heritage from, from him. As father to these children, I will see to it that they are brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, telling the next generation of his praiseworthy deeds. As head of our household, I will seek to be above reproach, self-controlled, sober-minded, respectable, and hospitable. I will fight for you, for our sons, for our daughters, and for our household. I will seek to do all these things by the strength of the Lord, understanding that on my own I will fail. The Lord do to me, and more also, if anything but death separates you and me. Lindsay, I promise you my life to you. I, Lindsay Doran Hicks, covenant before God and man to you, Joshua Lee Herman to be your loving wife and to submit myself under your headship, counting it an honor and a privilege that God has called me to be your help. To, as the church submits to Christ, I will submit myself to you in everything. I will live first unto our God and then unto you, loving you, cherishing you, caring for you, obeying you and respecting you. I will ever seek to please you and to bring you joy, doing you good and not harm all days of my life. Wow. Beautiful. Handsome. Thank you. I vow to you kindness, gentleness, and all of my love and affection, delighting only in you, my beloved husband. I will be your discreet chaste keeper at home, diligently, industriously, and faithfully caring for the affairs of your household, so that your heart may always safely trust in me. If the Lord chooses to so bless us, it will be my delight to be your fruitful bearer of children, and I will help you to diligently teach them the truth of the Lord. I will be loyal to you as your wife. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. I will be yours and will stand with you in times of plenty and in times of want, in times of sickness and in times of health, in times of joy and in times of sorrow, in times of failure and in times of triumph. 
all these things I will seek to do through the grace and strength of our Lord, knowing that he is our light and our salvation, and all of the glory belongs to him for what he has done and is continuing to do. I pledge to you my life as an obedient, loving, and faithful wife. The world is watching. They're not just listening to the sermons that we preach. We must use words. Romans 10, 14 is clear. How will they believe unless they hear? We cannot just be minds for the gospel. We must use words in courage and in boldness and truth. But we are also called to live the gospel. Not one at the expense of the other, both. We cannot live the gospel without words. But we also cannot preach the gospel without life. We are called to expand His kingdom. And one of the chief ways that we do this is by building godly households, in godly marriage, in godly offspring. Psalm 127, which I believe, Joshua, was your text for today in your Bible reading, it talks about how in order for a house to be properly built, to be built in a sufficient manner that it might last and endure, the Lord must build it. Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers, those who build it, they labor in vain. I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joshua, you may now kiss your bride. May I now present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Herbal.
that as we walk through life, you can't have a short-term view of living for just the moment. Not that you don't enjoy the moment. There's a lot of moment, a lot of things. You can look around all the people that are here that are very special to each of you in the place that they are in your life. So enjoy the moments. But don't just get stuck in the moments. Realize that this is a journey. We're real excited, real happy for you. And uh, scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. There's your example. When I first found out about Joshua, it came somewhat as a surprise, but at the same time, I kind of suspected something was up. Being sisters, we can read each other. So when she tried telling me, she prefaced it with a bunch of, don't tell anybody, this is a huge secret, nobody knows. Don't tell the little ones. To which I said, Lindsay, is it a guy? <laughs> she, was, she was so surprised that I would even guess that. 